can join the discussion. This morning, we're looking at developing digital skills for a post-COVID-19 economy. Some of us buy data and spend them on chats and uh, viewing WhatsApp status and all those. Do you, have, do you know that you have a way to make money out of every data you spend online? That's what we want to talk about. The things you can, the knowledge you can acquire, and then as well how you can also explore them to make business. We have this morning with us in the, st in the studio, Mr. Godson Chimwoba. He is an ICT consultant and as well as a digital skills coach. So if you need help, he is very ready to give you the steps you need to start, and then, then your initiative goes on. All right, good morning and welcome. Good to morning, you. sir. So, so uh, we can I call you Godson? Yeah, sure. You okay, can. we're talking about developing digital um, skills for a post-COVID economy. Now, this week happened to be the Youth Skill Week, okay. which was properly celebrated on the fifteenth. That was Wednesday, uh, where we celebrated the Youth Skills Day, and we've been trying so hard to stress the need for youths, not just Nigerian youths, to get skilled, get skilled. It's no more about the certificate. Yeah, sure. So now, you as an ICT consultant and a digital startup coach, what would you say is digital skills? Okay, digital skills generally are skills mm -hmm. that you don't need um, more of a physical setting to be able to run your business or be able to utilize those skills, right? You need a smart um, device. Okay. Peradventure, you can use um, just your phone, and you can also use a system, okay? Mm -hmm. So with any of those tools, it's easy for you to sell that skill online. Mm -hmm. So it's any skill that can give you the leverage of being able to be productive online, that is a digital, a digital skill. Okay. Can you go into details of these these two skills? Because I know about Google, but another But when we talk about these these two skills, what are we talking about? Okay. Um, for example, somebody who is here now, mm -hmm. we cannot alone you know um, US all, all right. Okay. The only avenue that that can be possible is through the online media. Mm -hmm. All right. It, it, can, it can be through um, physical, uh, more like um, a shared screen approach or uh, an approach where you just do your work and send to the person who needs that. Or maybe through a platform that has been built, then the persons in question collaborate and work on the project. So the digital skill, anything now, instead of in a chat, you can utilize it and actually be productive now, instead of just using the phone for the regular things, you use it for just answering calls or chatting. You can use it to go beyond just chatting, but chatting now or doing other extra things to be able to be productive to a particular business aspect. For example, anywhere in social media marketing, there's um, digital marketing generally that encompasses um, both affiliate marketing, dropshipping, and the likes. All right? Mm -hmm. We have yeah. enough time. You said social media marketing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I assume it's like normal advert on social media. Okay. Now I am assuming for the layman. So I need you to help explain to me. In fact, because <laughs> I really need us to get down to the, the mm -hmm. even the, the world, uneducated yeah. that is listening to us, you get. Kedi digital skills. Must you be educated? Or if you go now, ka Okay, um let me start with telling a little story, okay? Um from that, with my experience in trainings. And like I trained some time in Bayelsa two years ago or so, and I met so many persons who were full stack illiterates mm. who came for the class. Now, what we trained on, we trained on um, digital marketing and then we trained on graphics and web development. Mm. Now, it is not really about a thing I got out of for. Like, you mustn't be a um, university graduate or even a secondary school graduate to actually be able to. School. All right. You mustn't also be able to speak English. Okay. I've met people who don't speak English. Like, especially in the Yoruba, the of Mabuna, you see most of their developers, most of people who are actually skilled um, digitally, who don't even know how to speak English. They speak Yoruba. 
They still do their stuff. Like, you only come to programming now, and we to go some of those languages that have been translated to our native languages that we can easily at least understand and then still use. So it's not really about Ibo. The major thing you need to, to know how to operate the device. So for example, you, are, you have a digital skill of um, graphic design, for example. You need to at least know how to utilize either your phone or your system to create those designs. Mm -hmm. Now, there are so many of them. Like digital skill is actually very, very broad stuff. So it depends on the exact field now. Like programming as a field on its own, it's a digital skill. There's digital marketing. The inside digital marketing is actually also a large scope where you see so many of the other submodels. And inside some of those submodels, you still have different branches there. So the major thing now, picking an aspect. Now, what I normally do when I train is I ask questions, keeping my passion for. Okay. If you like telling stories, you can have a digital skill that is related to storytelling, which is copywriting. That is even a highly demanded skill that even so many other persons in other businesses still need. All right? So it goes beyond just learning how to program because that's what is your skill. So many people, many persons are just saying, okay, um, either programming or they start thinking of digital marketing as a broad stuff, not like streaming you know, down to the exact thing and hire a memo easily. All right? So I normally ask, what do you have passion for? What um, can you do without... Being stressed. So, from the person's um, as, uh, the, from the knowledge of the person or what the person can really do, you can easily suggest, okay, the other one is okay, and then you train the person on how to use the tools that you have available on that aspect. All right. And you mustn't be too learned to be able to do that. You mustn't also um, wait till you attend the university school, higher degrees, and all that before you start um, learning those things. Now, I want to ask a question. Uh, one of the reasons people will always drive, in fact, most people that will, uh, have excuses for, but at now, um, the issue of service provision in this part of the world seems to be very poor, where you can get, let me say, a 4.5 gig data for a month, and you are unable to use it because the network around here, the poor. Now, how can, how, when I, 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 I utilize this platform for a long time, how do you cope in that, uh, will I say, uh, network system depot, the down, or go for the joy but online, you discover that it's not because you don't have that, but in a network, the very poor, you can't even join in the discussion or participate in some of those things in April. So how have you guys been managing through this, and are there opportunities, are there options for someone who wants to do business and he's in a locality where there is poor network to still carry on with his business? Yeah, there has been so many alternatives that we've fallen back to, especially during this uh, COVID-19 era where mm -hmm. you are actually trying to manage yourself and still be productive, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, for example, let me use the um, case of schools who went online during this period. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the schools would comfortably stream online. Yeah, now, we have and the teaching the yeah, yeah, some of the schools would comfortably stream online, but some of their students would find it's hard to join those streamings and watch the full thing, yeah. right? So alternative that some of those schools brought up were to record, record the courses first and then just upload. So if you have access to the course at the time of the class, you can just watch the class. If you don't have access to it at that time, when you have access, you can always go and revisit the course. Yeah. So that way it cuts that whole um, issue that comes up while streaming live. Because if you miss something while you are streaming live, it, it actually goes that way. So you might just have some breakage at some point. So to uh, cut out that, they tried as much as possible to join the whole thing together, just record the whole courses together and then put up that way. Now, apart from that aspect of having the courses recorded or having structures set up before the launch, right? there are some other, some other, uh, some other alternatives to running things offline for some of those times. So you root some of the processes that requires, for example, if you are a programmer, you are not coding online, right? There are some of the basic things that you have to do online, maybe sharing your code, submitting your code online, or if you are a designer, submitting your design online. So most of those ones are processes that run offline. So you finish your process offline, and then when it's necessary to share, you share. Now, if the network is not available in your area, you can relocate to a different area and just allow it to send. Once it goes through, then you can continue whatever you're doing offline. Okay, no 
um, when we talk about skills, the physical skill, we have a whole lot of options. Now, when we talk about digital skills, what options do we have? Like if I decide, like I'm convinced, I want to go into digital skills, what options do I have? Okay. Um, and can you help me shed a little light on those options? Okay. Um, let me start with um, explaining digital marketing first of all. So that was, that's major, the most common one that people think of when you mention digital skills. So mm -hmm. um, digital marketing has a vast uh, structure. So one of them is um, affiliate marketing, where you tend to sell other people's services or products. All right? mm -hmm. So what you just need for, to be an affiliate marketer is to just be able to convince people. And for you to be able to convince people, you need to learn copywriting. All right, so you just need to be able to write text or record sounds that would be able to convince someone who is listening to it or who is seeing your write-up. Mm -hmm. All right, so with that, if the person is convinced with what you've written, mm -hmm. the person can go ahead and make a purchase, and you get a commission for that. So that's one digital skill. So you're able to put up a content to mm -hmm. convince someone to buy a product or a service. So that's affiliate marketing. Now, there's um, dropshipping where you tend to sell a product of um, other people, yeah. all right? Um, so for example, there is a store in Oka where they have different products, a specific kind of product you want to resell for them. So what you just do is you pick the name of the product, the details of the product, and then you put up. But well, most times, dropshipping works more of more like this. You, they have an online channel already, so you just recreate a channel to resell their product. So you link from your own platform to theirs. That's so, Yes, that's okay. the whole part of digital marketing. So you're just reselling the product for them, but you're reselling with your own brand name and brand details. So many of the big companies who've seen around also do that in disguise. Okay. Right? So I'm not going to mention them for the sake of oh, yes, yes, yes. protecting right? So Yeah, so many of the big companies do that. So they just resell the product for other persons and then get their commissions while they sell. Now, the good thing with uh, dropshipping is you don't have the, you know, the need to come and start having a customer service, have the whole facilities, and have the whole delivery service. What you're just doing is they book through your platform. This piece, the, the main owners of the business handle no, every single thing. The handling, okay. They handle yeah. every single thing. So you're just creating a channel to reach out to them. Okay. Right? It's so, almost like being an influencer, right? Exactly. Okay, go on. All right. So, but the good thing now is you're doing it in your own name. So the person who is buying is buying from you. So okay. he doesn't even know the main persons that are delivering the product to him. Okay. Right, so that's one. So um, there's social media marketing. At least today, everybody's online. So people tend to look for who, is, who would write uh, contents for them, who would post things for them, who would manage their WhatsApp and the likes, Facebook, Instagram, and the likes. So people pay a lot, actually, to get people who manage those accounts for them. Okay, yeah. So talking about all these things, how do I acquire a digital skill, okay, so especially for people in the rural areas? And then I also add uh, a follow-up to it immediately. Does it take a lot to acquire, uh, especially financial, <laughs> digital skills? Okay. Uh, well, some of the digital skills um, take so many financial involvement, especially when it goes to the aspect of programming or any higher um, digital skill that way. But for some of the smaller ones, you don't actually need too much to get started. Okay. All right. Um, the good Google Digital Skill Training is also up there that is available for some persons who can access the internet from their locations. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you ask of people in the rural area, how do they even get into this? Mm -hmm. Now, the only and simple way that they can get into it is if a program is organized to reach out to them. Because some of them don't even know that these things are accessible. Okay. All right, so if a program is made to research, some of them are not even online. So, so for those people in the rural area who are not online, they would need um, someone or a medium to get to them and then provide them with the facilities they need. And that's where the government can come in. Okay. At least from time to time, I've, we've seen different programs that the government have organized in that light. Mm -hmm. All right, so that can also help and it's already helping at some point. So that can also help do that in a very large scale. Mm. All right, so that's that. So beyond that, mm. you, can, you can also have the digital skill spreading across um, smaller communities. If it spreads across smaller communities, it's easier to get into those villages easily because 
um, there's a program we did uh, somewhere that should be at Delta State then, last year or so. Um, they picked from each constituency, different persons. Now, these different persons that learned those skills went back to train those people. So that could also be a simple way to make the digital, digital skills spread faster in those rare areas. So that's just it. You know, a lot of people will say, I don't really need digital skill, whether post-COVID era or not. And I'm sure of them, especially talking about Indianambra people who are known for businesses. Now, do you think somebody who is already into a business or it already has a, a, a shop, a physical shop, needs um, digital skill? Okay, I would answer that question by doing a little evaluation. Okay. All right, so um, you have a shop, you're selling, you're making the sales of like 100 products in a day because okay. you can reach out to people within your location and people who come to your shop, right? Now, just imagine, just imagine, in Hanambra we have a lot of persons who you can reach, not just in Oka, your shop is in Oka, but you can reach people in Onisha, you can reach people at Newi and some other locations who are willing to pay any price to just get your product, who have been looking for this product but don't know where to get it. Imagine they have a little digital skill of how to even just manage their business on social media, post it, make people know about it, and at least get people to be aware. Now, some of those persons looking for it would search Google, for example, and they would get directions of some other channels available for that on social media or whatever platform. So some of those people will still search social media directly. So if they search those things and your business is not there, you're actually losing out some number of customers who you don't even know are looking for you. Mm -hmm. But when your business is online, it's easier for you to be able to reach out to a larger number. That person who is making 100 sales in a day can make over 1,000 sales with even more profit because people who need those services who are ready to pay, like uh, the case I saw of recent, the, some, uh, the people who are selling Amala, in Oka currently, mm -hmm. all right? I'm like, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. What they just do is you pay a fee of one five. People comfortably, comfortably pay that because... Online? Yes, they placed it. They use social media to advertise, mm -hmm. right? So okay. you just pick the contact, call the person, they deliver to your doorstep, and you're good to go. Now, for people who have lived in areas like Lagos and the likes, You're right? Wrong. And they are back to Anambra and they actually like this kind of food and they have nowhere to get it. I mean, that's an open business yeah, for them. because I've been because craving <laughs> for peppers <laughs> too, okay. like forever. <laughs> All right, so, so on this um, issue, what has it been like for those in this economy, digital economy, in the COVID-19 era? Uh, for someone who wants to uh, enter this business, is there prospects? Is there something that will is encourage it that person? Yes. Is it lucrative enough? Uh, was the COVID-19 bad on it, or did it affect it positively? Okay. Um, <coughs> during the COVID-19 era, most of us actually didn't feel it. We were comfortably at home. Yeah, most people started working at home. We were still home. doing our work, like nothing is happening. Like <laughs> Most of us have been working remotely before, so everybody okay. was still at home doing their normal work, like normal life. Mm. So the only difference is that you can't go for parties during the weekend. That's the only you can go for events and the likes. So, but for work, work was still normal. In fact, work was more because okay. you tend to see people who are actually coming online more who need those services. Okay, let me assume I'm a businesswoman in the rural area and I'm watching the weekend show right now and you've convinced me on the need to acquire digital skills. And let me say, because of COVID-19, I don't have access to a training center where I can actually get trained. What would be your advice to me, considering I'm on Facebook, I'm on WhatsApp, I'm on um, Instagram, what would be your advice as a startup for me? Okay, um, first of all, let me just use this medium to also talk about um, a program I will be hosting soon, which okay. is free for everyone, every category of person. So business persons, being a student or whatever, you can join the program. Now, I noticed that so many businesses need designs and they pay a lot for this, okay. all right? Now, employing a designer and running your business as a startup is actually, actually very high, yes, a graphic designer, okay. all right? So part of what you even need as a social media marketer, as a programmer, as anything, is the design, okay. all right? Because at least you need to get your logo set up and some other business, uh, basic design stuff. So 
Um, the design uh, class is actually uh, a global training that should be happening uh, at the end of this month. Um, the link is uh, designclass.gochinat.com. Oh, right? Online. It's happening online. So okay. anybody can key in anyway. So that kind of business person who wants to at least start from somewhere yeah. would you join something like design that. Dot... Designclass.gochinart.com. Gochinart, G-O-C-H-I-N-A-R-T.com. Okay. Okay. All right, design class. Okay, yeah. then go ahead and advise me. Advice, so, yeah. um, apart from joining that class, after taking something like a class like that, you can also learn, for example, you can choose social media marketing to at least understand how to handle your social media account. You mustn't have a website for a start. At least balance your social media presence, and then you can also scale up to having a website if your business has at least have some capacity, you have reached out to some persons then you can also upgrade to having a website. You mustn't also have a very expensive website because most times people um, tend to specify a lot of features that they need. Actually, those features are actually what makes the website more expensive. So you can start small and then gradually improve on things. Does that right. mean that I cannot market my goods online on my social media platform without being a trained social media marketer? Okay, now this is the difference. You trying to blow trumpet as a non trumpeter, <laughs> <laughs> and you trying to blow trumpet as a trumpeter, the sound will always be different. Okay. Right? Okay. So, if you come online and then you are just posting your goods, some people, the marketing kills their business. Okay. Wrong marketing kills business. Now, if you come to um, a particular location where people don't wear shoes and then you're trying to sell shoes to them, I mean, they can even jail you if they have laws that are. Yes, that are actually against those things. So it's necessary to know, one, your target audience. Who is the target audience? Because even selling online, you have to actually target the right people. Because if you don't do that, you'll be, you'll be wasting both time and money. You're spending your data on the online, so you're actually spending money. You might be running Facebook ads or any other platform ads. All right? You are spending money doing that. So if you are spending, let's assume you spent 20,000 naira on ads, and then you're having no results. You, you're actually losing serious money already. So it's necessary to learn the skill first so you don't waste money. Mm. You're supposed to gain from it. So if you don't know the right thing to do, just posting your product online won't get you a sell. Yeah. Right? Posting your product online won't get you a sell. You need to know some other unnecessary things to do. Where can you post it without even paying for ads? Where can you get it up and then you get sales easily? Yeah. My final question, I wanted to, in 30 seconds of part five, just react to this. The situation where I want to start uh, investing in digital skills, but I'm afraid that people will begin to think that I'm doing the Yahoo. <laughs> so how would I go around that? How would I survive? Is there something, is there a way to uh, get around it, actually? Okay, well, one thing is that you can't control people's mind. They are free okay. to think whatever they want to think. So... The first the most basic thing is you know yourself and you know you're not doing Yahoo. Okay. So just go ahead, manage your skill, and do very fine with it. Uh, we that have been on it, we've exceeded just working for people within our location and we're working internationally currently. Okay. So that is the goal, not to just tie your business that, down to the local markets. So when you're doing all this now, what digital, um, someone told me, said, he said, mm that um, the digital world is a world without security. Okay. Now, a few days back, we heard how the accounts of um, um, a, a top billionaires were hacked, people like Barack Obama. Elon with, Musk. Yes, even us. Bill Gates, where their Twitter accounts were hacked. Now, if I decide to go digital with my business, is there any advice you can give me as an ICT expert to ensure that my business is still secured? Okay. Uh, well, security, in the in nutshell, um, is something that can be easily achieved if the persons running the business understand the measures to it. Now, the basic security is change your password regularly, use strong password, characters and um, character um, case sensitive characters, and then using um, symbols and all that. All right. So some of those things and the necessary things you need to put in place. Apart from those things, there are other authentications that you also need to set up yeah. to make sure that your account is secured. The two-factor authentication, you can use Google Authenticator. Does it really work? Because right now, that's the question on a lot of people's mind. Yeah. Are you yeah. saying Bill Gates did not use it? 
Okay. okay. Now, the gate is not the person operating this account. You already like yeah. you already okay, know. Okay, yeah, so many course. other, some of those persons you are seeing that can't be hacked or whatever, they have managers. Okay. And two things to hacking is this. It's either there's a loophole on the platform itself, that's one, or there is an issue. An insider. Okay. Yeah. With an insider giving an information out that way. So, mm. all right, thank you very much. God sent to you by ICT Consultant and the Digital Skills Coach. Thank you for joining us on Week on Show sir. this morning. It's been an exciting one having you. And for me, I would say, I don't know what you're waiting for, but me, I am going digital. And then let me give you an insight. Let me give you an addition. D during this COVID-19 era, I decided to partake in the Google Digital Skills. Yes. Oh, yeah. You can actually Google it. Most of the courses there are free. Pick one and equip yourself. And then... For me, do the right thing to also remain in the business at this time. Let's move over now to our new studio for breakfast news. Stay with us.